So then you can learn to form what's what you really believe as opposed to just having an opinion and fighting for it. Like take both sides and start to, and, and see if you can argue it better than both sides can argue it. And that's such a great technique. And I've done that during this virus. I've asked myself, well, if this truly does grow ex exponentially, what does the math look like? But like I have a math background. You could tell just by the way I look. I have a math background and exponential growth is one thing, but exponential growth in what's called a bounded environment where there's boundaries does it looks like an S. It doesn't look like a straight up curve. So, right. So that that uh, advice, by the way, comes from Charlie Munger about how to form an opinion. And his, he's a genius when it comes to that kind of stuff, how to correct cognitive biases. And I don't know. I just, I feel like really... I feel really bad now. Like there are some people I'm just just disappointed in that they were willing to put the entire economy affecting 100 million people at risk for, for a virus where the data was all showing. The data has been showing for a long time. This virus doesn't last forever. I mean, China has 1.3 billion people and there's less than 10,000 deaths. Even Italy, you don't have to believe China. Look at Italy. Italy now is starting to decrease, number of new deaths a day. There's 60 million people in Italy, and I don't know, what is there? There's uh, 7,000 deaths. Every death is horrible. But by the way, the average number of deaths during this time period in Italy has not increased because the average life expectancy in Italy is 80, and the, the, the average death in, of coronavirus in Italy is 70, age 79.5. So... Nothing's changed in Italy and we made it an entire crisis. But here's the question. Why were we as a population so willing to go under practically martial law with ambiguous data, uh, uh, risking the lives of tens of millions of people who are affected by this economy? I mean, people go homeless, people starve, people die when the economy goes into a depression. And we've been risking a scenario even much worse than the Great Depression. The data that's coming out this week is worse data than in the worst week of the Great Depression. You have to realize that. And that's just one or 10 days of lockdown. So I think we should, we should you know, hold on to this positive data. And, and again, no major news outlet is reporting on any of this positive data. The most important news I think today is that Italy, the number of new deaths has gone down since March 21st. That's a long time. It shows that Italy is probably stabilizing or, or going down. And even more important, the guy who's the author of the main report that every media outlet has been reporting, and he was saying 18 months quarantine, half a million deaths, he's now reversed. He said he's saying far fewer than 20,000 deaths and that the virus in the UK will peak after two or three weeks. Now you could say, well, South Korea did aggressive testing, aggressive quarantining. Okay, UK did nothing. They just went on a lockdown like a day or so ago. Zero. And they, he, he's talking about the UK. So I've been saying on these IG Lives and in my articles that I expect a peak in the US around April 15th, give or take. I think that's still true. But I think in many states, the probably peak has already been released. And I mean, has already been passed. And so might as well let people go back to work, which I expect they'll do. I, the only reason I think they haven't let people go back to work yet is because they wanted to make sure that stimulus package gets passed. The stimulus, stimulus package is too big, but screw it. I'm happy it's too big. I want to benefit from the stimulus package. What you're going to see in the next few months, you're going to see horrible economic data. There's nothing we can do about that. It's, it's, it's a shit show in the data. But starting around August, you're going to see the effect, the beginning, the beginning effects of the stimulus package. It's going to be enormous. Individuals are getting money. Small businesses are getting money. Big businesses are getting money. Taxes are being postponed. So much money is being spent on new medical equipment and, and new this and new that. This economy is going to surge from August and then through another 18 months to two years. And... I don't even give a shit who's president. That has nothing to do with how much this economy is going to surge in the next two years after the initial shit show of data coming in in May and June and potentially July. Starting around August, it's going to be boom. Now, the stock market is going to go up starting probably now. Who knows? Maybe it could get a little lower. But
But now finally we're seeing less volatile days and we're seeing consistent up days. So whatever stocks you wanted to buy or thought were opportunities, I would buy them now. Or at least, another thing is, start to think about what businesses you could start because there's many new business opportunities here, by the way. Um, look at all the businesses that flourished during this time. Remote learning, remote meetings, remote conferencing, um, cannabis. The stocks have been in the crapper, but the companies, when I call the CEOs of the companies, and again, I don't, I'm not just making an opinion, I call everybody and ask, the CEOs of these companies, business is through the roof. Everyone has been hoarding marijuana. For better or for worse, everyone's been stocking up on their vaping uh, equipment. I don't even know what that is, but they've been stocking up on it. So so look at the businesses that have, drones, robotics, uh, obviously medical, but that's or, you know already up. Think about what businesses you could start. For me, for me, the business I want to start, I want to make t-shirts that say Wuhan lacrosse. And that's it. That's my, I'm not a very ambitious guy. I, I'm really into the idea of making Wuhan college t-shirts and uh, selling those online. So I think that would be fun. So um, I'll have a, a little bit of a Q and A. I actually, uh, for, for today, I would say, you know, I've been looking at all the data, but I've been just as anxious as, as everyone else. Today is the first time I feel the data and the interpretations of the data have reached a tipping point. And, and now I think we're gonna start to see better and better data. I also think the stimulus package is gonna be very exciting to see how that gets implemented in um, uh, uh, the future. And, uh, you know, again, this has nothing to do with politics. I'm very disappointed in all the people. Like, here's a great example. Chloroquine, there is so much evidence. The CDC knew about chloroquine in 2005 that this anti-malarial drug could help with SARS and all these other coronaviruses. If we were ready with chloroquine, maybe it would have been able to help now. I'm so disappointed how politically one side was in favor of chloroquine, the other side was not in favor of chloroquine. Why did it have to be a political divide? Why can't you just be reasonable and say, well, we should test this. We should, the FDA should look at this. That's fair. But, but to just have an opinion on it based on your politics is so stupid that I realized how disappointed I am in, in so, so many smart people who took a hard line on, on something so crucial to saving lives and they took that hard line just for political reasons. I'm apolitical. I liked the UBI, uh, but I didn't like other things. I, so I liked Andrew Yang, but I didn't like other things about Andrew Yang. I like some Republican issues. I like some Democratic issues. By the way, I just bet on predicted.org. I just bet yesterday on Cuomo running for president. And then I actually took the bet off today because it doubled in one day and I'm not so sure now. Here's the problem. There are 60 million Democrats out there, 60 million. Why is Joe Biden the number one Democrat of all 60 million Democrats. Is he really the choice for the Democratic candidate? The guy is clearly dealing, it's sad. He's ill with dementia. Have you seen one video with him where he doesn't have signs of dementia? And uh, uh, why is he the nominee? Sure, let's have an Andrew Cuomo as the nominee. Trump versus Cuomo, I think we'll have a real debate of issues and policies and so on. I miss the real debates. Like, I feel like when Barack Obama and Mitt Romney were running against each other, so that's the 2012 election, you had a real debate about issues. Like, I don't think they hated each other. I think they just had some different issues and they forcefully debated them. And as a society, we chose which side we liked better. And that was not, I don't want to say it was cordial, but it was better than is now. Now, everyone, if I'm, I'm left of center, but the people now who I know who are Democrats, they think I'm a fascist, um, uh, but I'm left of center. But they're so to the left, I'm, I'm considered like a fascist, even though I'm liberal on almost every single issue. And, and so it doesn't make sense anymore, our political system and the way we, we are hating each other. And, and that hate, unfortunately, has bled into how we deal with a virus that affects billions of people not just because of the virus, but because of the economy affects billions of people. There's no such thing as the economy. It's not separate from society. You shut off the economy, you shut off society. China 
There's no economy. It's a communist country. So you can shut off the economy. By the way, 60 million people died there of starvation in a, a few decades ago. So it's not like such a great system, which is why they've been switching. But the U.S. just can't shut off the economy without shutting off the lives of 128 million people who, who work in this economy. So, uh, uh, Victoria used to be a Democrat, now I'm an independent. I guess I, I used to be a Democrat as well. I voted in 1991 for us in a special election for Senator in Pennsylvania for Harris Wofford. This is one of the last times I voted, but he was a Democrat. But now I'm nothing because I'm so just disgusted with the partisanship. But anyway, that's, that's enough of that. One thing I do wanna stress is that for me, one thing that's really helped me, so I wrote about this a bunch of years ago and I wrote about this in my book, Choose Yourself. I've gone broke so many times and I've been so depressed at different times. I'm a depressive, I've taken, you know, I've had lots of issues with anxiety, with depression. I, I was at the World Trade Center on 9-11, during, of course, during the financial crisis, I was on CNBC a lot. And, I, and I, I would just get so anxious and so depressed and I would usually go broke. And so what started working for me was what I call a daily practice where, and I've started this a long time ago, every day did I improve, try to improve myself with physical health. Every day did I try to improve my relationships, get rid of toxic relationships and, and feed and water loving relationships. Every day I, 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 I try to be creative. I write down in a pad my 10 ideas per day, every single day. And by the way, they don't have to be good ideas. You just wanna exercise the idea muscle. If you exercise the idea muscle, if you write down 10 ideas a day for three to six months, you're gonna be like this super idea machine compared to everyone else. And yes, we are kind of competitive against everyone else. You will be a super idea machine compared to them. You will start businesses, you'll write books. You'll, you'll, all these things happen for me once I started writing 10 ideas a day down. This is not like miracle advice. I, I'm not gonna write an entire self-help book and try to give speeches about this. This is just common sense. But many people, if you don't let the idea, if you don't feed that idea muscle, if you don't exercise it, it will atrophy within weeks. And so the very simple technique that I do for exercising my idea muscle is I write 10 ideas a day. And it's so incredibly useful. So during this period, I've, I've come up with many different ideas of things I wanna do as we leave this period. I've also investigated all the stocks that I'm interested in, you know, as we start to leave it and we're starting to leave it now. And uh, uh, if you sign up for my newsletter, my newsletter just came out uh, and it says, could pandemic peak in two or three weeks? Uh, uh, that was the title that I wrote today. So top three stocks I'd invest in right now, I don't really wanna recommend because if people, uh, take my advice and then lose money. I only hear from those people. I never hear from the people who, who make money. So, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I own, but I'm not recommending it. I own um, a, a very good law enforcement stock, uh, RAP Technologies, WRAP, the, the symbol's WRTC. I'm probably gonna buy RVT, Royce Value Trust. I'm not recommending it. It's a closed end fund that tracks the market, but it's trading at a 20% discount to the stock market, even though it owns a bunch of stocks in the market. So it's it's crazy how much has gone down. And so I expect it to go up from that, but, it, but even more importantly, it pays more than a 10% dividend. By the way, I don't own the stock. I'm recommending a stock I don't own. I only own one stock, which is this WRTC. Uh, and I'm not recommending that. I'm just saying I own it. And uh, they, they make a, a non-lethal weapon which who knows, maybe there, there's a, a great need for that because Taser tends to kill uh, people every single week. I've seen horrible, horrible videos. And of course, guns kill people. So it's good to have a non-lethal weapon in law enforcement. And again, I know the CEO, I know the inventor. I was, to be honest, I, I, I was a, a co-founder. So, um, I'm, uh, but again, I'm not recommending the stock. I'm not, I don't recommend stocks at all. Uh, I would say, 